Hey guys, so this is going to be the most meta tech blog ever. It's going to be a tech blog on how I make my tech blog. This last round of travels that I had, I got a lot of questions from people on the road about what kind of camera I use, what kind of software I use. So I am going to do an entire tech blog on the entire process of how these come together from the inspiration phase all the way into shooting and editing and uh, even what happens after I upload the videos. So uh, hopefully if some of you guys out there have questions about how I make my videos, uh, this will answer each and every one of them. So let's get started. Every tech blog has to start off with a piece of inspiration. That is the move that I'm trying to do in it. And there are three main ways that I get inspiration for moves. One of which is theory. I'll take a move that I already know how to do and change around the variables in it somewhat until I get something that I've never seen before. Either that, or I'll just straight up come at it from the perspective of, theoretically, this thing could possibly exist. How would it go together? Uh, a lot of cases, this starts off as stuff that lives in my notebook or stuff that I run through a Poi simulator, and sometimes it's just articles that I run into online that have fun shapes in them that I think would make good Poi patterns. Another great source of inspiration comes from other people. I think that this is how the vast majority of us learn at some point in our career. Uh, this can take the form of spin jams or running into people at fire festivals, or as is my usual preferred method, watching a lot of web video. I don't watch nearly as much as I wish I did, but I do tend to get a lot of the ideas that I really, really enjoy off of web video. Uh, currently, the places that I most often go to are my subscription feed on YouTube, and I don't even think I could begin to list all the people that I'm subscribed to at this point. Uh, the Tech Boy group on Facebook, which I tend to pop in and out of, I'm, I'm not nearly as consistent on it as I wish I were. Uh, also, just friends feeds on Facebook. Uh, and more recently, uh, Reddit and Google+. Google+, Plus in particular, has been showing a lot of good uh, Poi videos of late, and the community there is only getting bigger. Another great source of inspiration can honestly just be found by practicing and in some cases doing flow practices. Seeing what works, what doesn't, and sometimes finding surprising moments where you're guided to moves that you didn't think existed before. Another great way that you can get this sort of inspiration is if you're trying out a move that you're having difficulties with, every once in a while you can find something lurking in that move that you didn't know was there, that gives you access to something that you weren't expecting. Honestly, a lot of my tech vlogs are recorded off of moves where I completely fail to do tricks that I've seen other people doing in videos, but I discover something interesting in the process. So once I've got the inspiration down, it's time to actually practice the move to get it ready to record a tech vlog on. Now, a raw estimate would be that it takes about one to two hours of practice for every single minute that you see in one of my tech vlogs. But it's not a hard and fast rule. There are some tricks that I get down almost instantly and some tricks that require weeks and in some cases months of practice in order to get to a point where I can record a tech vlog on them. I usually say that I'm ready to record a tech vlog on a trick when I can get 8 to 10 reps of it cleanly and without any errors. This is because I need to in order to record the intros to the videos. I do occasionally find that when I'm recording those videos I don't have them moved down as well as I thought I did in which case I'll give it another try weeks later. In some cases, I've had to do this four or five times before I get a tech vlog that I can live with. Now, you might notice that a bunch of videos together I'll be wearing the same clothes in. This is because I try and film several videos at the same time in order to stay ahead of uh, the kind of publishing schedule that I have online. This ensures that I'm able to have videos come out consistently and not miss dates, even when I'm traveling or on the road. It does, however, tend to mean that I have to do a lot of work when I do sit down to record a single video. Hey, so this is Meridian Hill Park, also sometimes called Malcolm X Park in uh, Washington, D.C., Northwest. It's a nice place to practice because, as you can see, it's very, very, very picturesque. There's a lot of beautiful statues, and it's got a lot of wide open spaces to practice in. Um, also, it tends to have a very, very low volume of tourists that come through here. Now, from time to time, I've also been known to uh, record tech vlogs over in Lafayette Park in front of the White House or just in any random open space that I can find as I'm traveling. It totally depends. If there are some of you guys out there that would really like to see more sites of DC in the background of these videos, let me know in the comments. So getting good audio has long been one of the most difficult parts of recording my tech blog. This is the best solution I currently have. This right here is a lavalier microphone that's made by a company in England. It actually plugs directly into the headphone end slash mic in jack on my iPhone, which sits in my pocket as I'm recording. I then use the Voice Memos app for iOS, 
and record from the lavalier mic, which is usually pinned to my chest. Now the interesting thing about this is it means that when I put together my tech log, I'm actually recording from two different sources simultaneously. They wind up needing to be synchronized back up in post-production, but it does usually mean that I get more control over how I edit my audio. Once it comes time to actually record my video, I have three different cameras that I use depending upon what my needs are. My first port of call is usually my flip cam, which I've had for years and which I have a great relationship with. I love how small and portable it is, plus which I love that it films at 60 frames per second so I can get slow motion footage out of it. Any intro to a video you've seen me do in the past couple of years that has a slow motion intro on it was probably recorded on that flip cam. Whenever I set it up, I usually have a small gorilla pod that I use to ensure that it's pointed the right direction and it's stable. Now, it is getting up there in years, so the battery life isn't what it used to be, and playback on it is a royal pain because I can't track where in the video I happen to be. Now, whenever I'm in a place where the flip cam's uh, battery is dying or I can't use it for any other reason, my usual camera call is my iPad, which is fantastic because it has that big bright screen on the back that I can use to track through my footage and take a good look at what all of my moves look like, unlike the small screen on the flip cam. Now, the downside is that it only records at about 30 frames a second, but usually that big beautiful display makes up for it. Most of the tutorials that I've done in the past couple years have been recorded on the back of that iPad. Uh, whenever I set it up, I usually just set it up with my case tilted over and I use my water bottle to prop it up with a wedge. It's kind of a lo-fi solution, but it works well for me. In cases where neither of those cameras is available, where say I'm out of batteries on my flip cam, or say I'm out of room on my iPad, my camera call is my iPhone, which has the least quality camera of all the ones that I use, but it'll do in a pinch. Also, I usually use it for my audio recording, so it's usually not available, but rarely I will use it. Now, I just got the new iPhone uh, last week, and I'm really, really eager to start playing with it because I'm told it records at 120 frames per second, so I can get super slow motion out of it. We'll see how this one works in the grand scheme of things. When it comes to shooting, I usually wind up having to do about three to four takes depending upon the video. This will happen for a variety of reasons. A lot of cases, the main reason is that because I shoot my videos all as one single continuous take, I have to get everything right in it, or at least nearly so. This also means that a lot of errors tend to wind up in the final version. Uh, another reason this tends to happen is that I am in a public park more often than not when I'm recording these. So things will happen like people or pets will walk into frame and I have to throw out the take. Also, it being DC, it's not exactly rare for police helicopters to be flying overhead and blow the audio on a given take. Either which way, usually there's more than a little bit of footage to have to edit through by the time I get home. Hi, thanks so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. Doing so will help other people find my content and it lets me know that I'm creating videos that are worth seeing. Also, check out my website at drexfactor.com. There, you can purchase sets of poi like the ones I use in my videos and get access to a great range of written inspirational content. Plus which you can subscribe to my videos there in the form of a podcast. Finally, if you go to flowtoys.com, you can enter in my special promo code and get a small discount on your order. Doing these things helps support me in my flow journey, and it means that I can make more videos for you guys. So, thank you in advance for your support.